Hey, what's up guys? So last week we finished up putting the cutting unit back together and today I'd like to go mow, but before we do that, I need to do a little back lapping on here just to make sure that the reel and bed knife is matched up well again after putting all this back together. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do a back lap on this Flex 2100 and we'll go check out the putting green here in a little bit. All right, so before I can do a back lap, I have to separate the cutting unit from the traction unit because there's a collar back here that's intended to slip away, but the previous owner put a roll pin through it for some reason. I guess it was giving them trouble. And so I can't do that. I've got to actually take the reel off to do that. It's really not a big deal. It's just an extra step. So make sure you got the kickstand set on the back. Just take these two bolts loose here on the cutting unit. And then this cutting unit just pulls away from that collar and that's it. And so something else I've learned through this process of kind of tearing everything apart this fall is there's actually a disc brake inside of here that whenever the reel disengages, that brake helps slow the reel down and actually bring it to a stop. So you don't want to do a back lap with that brake set up against the reel like that. So it's important to either take this collar loose if you can do that or like in my case, take the cutting unit off to do that back lapping first, just so you don't damage that disc brake that's in there. All right guys, so before I show you how to back lap this reel, I've actually decided to reshoot this part of the video because I've done the back lapping and I've gone in mode a few times since then. And I've had a few things happen that I've learned a few things from and I think it'd be good information to pass on to you guys. So just to recap a little bit about where we've been, you know, I've tore the whole reel apart, I've replaced the bearings on it, pulled the side plates apart and everything. So now that we've got it all put back together and I've made sure that everything's square, when I started to do the back lap, I took my paper along through here and did my checks to check, check the reel and I noticed that the reel was in here really tight. And so I expected that to be the case because, you know, everything uh, isn't exactly where it was whenever I took it apart initially. And so something that's important to note is before I took it all apart, I had everything dialed in. I had done a back lap, everything was sharp. I mowed just a few times with it. So everything was dialed in on the reel. And so after putting it back together and I noticed that everything was really tight and some things have changed, I just went ahead and backed off my adjustment screws. And we'll talk more about those in a sec, but I backed those off and did my checks again and did the back lapping, did my checks again, made sure everything's good and sharp and it's cutting good and it was. So I've gone out and mowed a couple of times and brought it back in here and took the paper back through here again and did my checks. So what happened is I had a real sharp cut here and then the center, but over here the reel would flutter the paper and a lot of times after mowing, that'll happen on this mower for whatever reason. This is, I guess, the trailing edge. If you look at the way the blades are shaped and how it's moving the grass through, this is the trailing edge. And so I always find that there's more of a gap on this end of the reel um, after mowing. And, and so in this particular instance, what I noticed is it was fluttering and not cutting the paper at all, where normally it might flutter a little bit, but still sharp that it would cut into the paper a little bit. So you knew you still had a pretty sharp edge there. So just from my experience on this mower, I knew that that wasn't correct. And so that got me to start investigating this a little bit more to find out what's going on. So when I say that there's something off and it's just not uh, cutting the way it should, we're talking about thousands of an inch, okay? 0 0.001 or two or something is the amount of tolerance that we're talking about being off here. And so I noticed that it just wasn't right. So it, those thousands of an inch make a big difference. And so I went back to the manual, went back to the real basics and just kind of started over with how Toro recommended to kind of square this all back up and make sure everything's good again. And the way that you do that is you back these screws off to the point, not screws, but these adjustment bolts back here. 
You back these off to the point that you can take a piece of paper and stick it in here parallel with the bed knife and the blade and you'll feel just a little bit of tension right here as you pull that paper through it. So you use that as your measurement to get this side and this side to line back up. And so after doing that, I've noticed that as I suspected, this side was actually a couple clicks off from being on par. So each click is 0.007 thousandths, okay? Or seven thousandths. And so essentially I was roughly 14 thousandths off on this side, which I knew was more than what I normally experience. And so I went ahead and set this paper in here and got the reel adjusted. And then I went through and did the back lapping and now everything is working really well again. I've got a real sharp edge off through the each end through the center. And this side over here after mowing again, um, everything's staying where it should. And so, so I just want to point that out that if you've taken this all apart and put it all back together, you might want to go through the basics again and just make sure that your reel has the proper amount of gap between the bed knife, reel and bed knife before you do the back lap and then do your back lapping just to make sure everything's squared up and in check. So, so now let's show you guys how to do that back lapping on the reel. Okay, so before I do a back lap, I like to take a piece of paper down through here and do my checks. And so I've gone ahead and backed these off just to show you guys uh, what you would typically experience. So if you take your piece of paper down through here and check your left side, it should cut clean. Your center is gonna cut clean. But what I have happen a lot of times, you can hear that flutter, is I don't get a good cut down here on the right side. And so the natural tendency is gonna be on these adjustment screws you want to, that you want to crank down on this adjustment screw to bring that up so it's cutting correctly. And that's wrong, don't do that. Because like I mentioned before, if you don't adjust these together, you can get your reel out of round very quickly because what's gonna happen is if you start cranking on this one, trying to raise it up each time you're doing a back lap or trying to do a mow, you're going to end up causing your reel to get out of round and it, it'll mess this all up really quickly if you do that. Because each turn of this knob, each little click here is 0 .007, so it's 7,000 click each time you do that. And so over time, that can really add up. And so what I typically will do is whenever that's like that, if I'm cutting good here, here, but not over here, I'll go ahead and do my back lap, and you'll see why, and I'll, I'll show you here in a minute. Um, so when you do your back lap, it'll sharpen all this up and we'll make one final adjustment and everything will cut just perfectly like it's supposed to. So today I'm gonna back lap with 120 grit. For most of you guys mowing Bermuda out there or mowing a little taller, you're probably gonna, probably gonna have 80 grit back lapping compound and 80 grit's great. It'll put a sharp edge on it every time really quick. The only reason why I go with 120 grit is I like to polish up these edges and get them really fine and sharp because I'm mowing so low on the putting green and I find it gives me a better cut on the bent grass. Bermuda doesn't seem to care much uh, one way or the other. It, it mows just fine with 80 grit, but 120 helps polish it up just a little bit. So to back lap this, there's, if you remember there's a plug over here on the side where you can access the back lapping bolt on the mower. You just take a half inch socket on your drill and put it on the lowest, lowest setting. And what you're gonna do is spin this reel backwards and um, take, take just a paintbrush, dip it into this back lapping compound. And we're gonna spin this thing backwards and run this compound down through here. And you wanna do that for no more than two minutes, okay? And that's based on Toro recommendation that you just anytime you do a back lap, you don't need to spin it backwards for any more than two minutes to get a sharp edge on it. And like I mentioned before, on the 80 grit compound, it'll happen really quick, so it takes a little longer sometimes on the 120. So let's go ahead and do this back lap. And something else I want to point out too is make sure you get lap, back lapping compound here on these inside edges because 
the way the blades are shaped, the backlapping compound is actually going to start moving down this way. So if you don't get compound up here on these edges up here, it's not going to get sharpened. And so as you spin that backwards, what you're going to see start happening is you're going to get a polished kind of a silver uh, edge here. The lapping compound is going to change color. It's going to be a real shiny silver. And that's when you know that you're getting good contact and everything's starting to do its job. So just keep spinning it backwards so you get a nice uh, polished silver look on it. All right, so after running that for a couple minutes, you want to check this just like you would a pocket knife. Just kind of run your finger across the blade like this. And you should start to feel that that's a really sharp edge there. And so once you get a really sharp edge like that, we'll just go hose it out and then we'll come back in here and make our final adjustments. So I just washed this out again. Got the 120 grit out of here. And what you'll hear or notice when you're you know, doing it yourself. You can tell there's more space between the reel and the bed knife. You can almost kind of hear it's got real light contact. And that's to be expected because back clapping's taking little bits of metal away from the reel and the bed knife at the same time. So to make our final adjustments, I'm gonna turn each side one click in to start with. And you can feel an instant change in that that you're getting more uh, reel and bed knife contact. So you want to take your piece of paper and check and make sure you're getting a sharp cut. And see now, on this end, I'm getting a perfect cut on it. And that's what I expected to happen. Where before, the blade was just kind of fluttering the paper. Now we got a sharp edge on it. So we're all set and ready to go with this now. So that's why I want to stress again, make sure you adjust these together. Don't, don't do them independently of each other. I know that's just seems like a natural fix, or you might think your reel's out of round, or bed knife, something's not right, whatever. It has nothing to do with it. For the way these are designed to work, they move together, and if you'll just back it off one click, do your back lapping, wash it out real good, turn it one click in. Sometimes you've gotta go two clicks in, but after you do that, you've got a real nice cut from this cutting unit, and this thing's all set up and ready to go. So let's go uh, put this thing on and then let's go check out the putting green. That's yeah, so right here on the putting green and I got out here earlier today. I wanted to take a look and see what kind of cut I wanted to go with. We've had, you know, snow a couple weeks ago I told you about and then this last week the weather's been really cool. We've been down in the 20s at night and you can tell today the wind's blowing. It's just really not that great weather out here. So I brought a measuring stick out here to see where the turf is actually sitting right now. And so I was going to say that we're sitting at about five millimeter just to make it easy. And so to do uh, 156 like I mentioned before, you know that's 530 seconds. That'd be pretty low cut on this and today I don't want to stress this turf out any more than it already is. You can see we've got some dead grass tips going on in here and there's some purple in some other areas. And so that's purple usually from the cold or from the heat stress, one of the two. And so in our case, we've had some cold. So I don't want to put any more stress on it, but I do want to give it a good trim just to stimulate some growth for the weeks coming up that are going to start warming up. And so, you know, like many of you guys, my yard's not always perfect. So this is a perfect case of that. The putting green has its ups and downs. And so I'm going to show you guys how we're going to deal with it and we're going to recover from it here in the spring and it'll all look really nice before long. So let's go readjust the mower from that 156 and go raise the height a little bit. All right, so let's get this mounted back up. To do that, we just need to get this collar to match back up with the drive shaft. And then we'll put these arms back on. Make sure you put that rubber plug back in on your side cover. So you can see what I'm talking about here on this adjustment gauge. 5.30 seconds 
is where our 156 mark is, which is just under four millimeter. And so today I measured my tips to be right around five millimeter. So I think what I'm gonna do is set up for six millimeter. That set us up just under a quarter of an inch just to give it a pass and a good trim to see what happens here. All right, so we decided to raise the height of cut to six millimeter today just to see what happens with that. Because whenever you set up a real mower, you've got a thing known as bench height of cut and effective height of cut. And what that means is, uh, just for simplicity, this isn't exactly how it works, but let's say you set this unit up on the bench, which is this area here, you set it up to be a quarter of an inch. Well, when you go out there and mow, and the weight of the mower sits down in the grass, what happens is you are actually mowing at an effective height of cut, and it may be closer to an eighth of an inch. And so all that to say, it's not that extreme of a difference, but all that to say is that you need to be mindful of your bench height of cut versus your effective height of cut when dealing with a putting green. And so I need to go higher, uh, like I said, six millimeter today, set this thing. That way my effective height of cut will be at or around five millimeters is what I'm hoping when it goes through there. So that way it doesn't cut into the already stressed turf. It just gives it a nice clean trim. And like I said, we'll see where we're at. Maybe we need to set it a little lower and we'll mow it again. So this is a adjustment gauge I picked up at r and &R. These things are fantastic. They, a little costly, but man, they're worth every bit of it. So the way I used to do this is I built a bar here with a, an adjustable screw threaded into it. And so I would take this little measuring stick. And so I guess at one time I was set up for 10 millimeter, but I would adjust that screw in or out to set my how to cut and then I would set it up underneath my bed knife here and I would adjust this up and down to set my how to cut and that worked fine but the problem I started to experience with it is you would be adjusting these and you'd actually start pulling that bed knife away from the reel before you realize what's going on because you can't really feel it that well because it's such a thin piece of metal and so I noticed that I was having to backlight more often because I was actually pulling the bed knife away from the reel and, and losing my true sharpness there on the reel and bed knife. So, so you know, like I said, that's a good way to start out. It's cheap and effective. I bet I spent $30 on making this. And so that's the way I used to do it. I bought this AccuGauge from r and &R. It's really great because you can set it to inches, millimeters, fractions, anything you want, and, and it gets us adjusted to a real precise measurement. So to adjust your height of cut, you just need to loosen off these side bolts, on these height of cut arms here. Set up your gauge, millimeters, fractions, inches, whatever you're aiming for. So today, for ease, we're gonna hit, hit uh, six millimeter. So you just set this up hook it on to your bed knife and just adjust this up and down to get to your measurement. So what I like to do is I like to get kind of close with it and then I like to snug these bolts down a little bit to put some resistance on it. When you adjust one side, it, it affects the other, so you've got to play this fine game of back and forth until you get it set just right. So by tightening this nut here on the how to cut arms, I can start to adjust this by the hundredth millimeter here. So it allows me to get really accurate with my measurement. I always like to check it all several times just to make sure it's right on. Because like I said, once you adjust one side, it does affect the other. All right, so we should be all set up for six millimeter now.
All right, guys, so that six millimeter height was just perfect. We took off just a little bit off the top. You can look at these clippings. You see some of them are long. Some of them, for the most part, are all just the right, right length. So we made a good decision there on that six millimeter how to cut. So let's go measure it and see what our effective how to cut turned out to be. So you can see the leaf blades are cut real clean. So that means we did a good job on the back lap. So I brought the measuring stick out here. We'll see what our effective how to cut turned out to be. So kind of depending on where you sit, it ends up being about four to five millimeters. So that's what I mean by that six millimeter bench out of cut. Your effective out of cut turns out to be slightly different. So you just want to ease into that or you're mowing low like this. Some of the turf's still a little long because it's like I said, it's just being mowed at 156. So I've went ahead and dropped it again to 2188. And so we're going to hit it one more time and see how it comes out. I hope y'all enjoyed the putting green today. That's going to do it for this one. We'll see you guys in the next one.